we're not the lead investor for people, but we bring money to the table. The more people that you have investing in your company, you know, have a vested interest in helping you succeed, the, the better off you are. Welcome back to another episode of the Growth and Scaling Podcast. I am so excited today to have one of the guys who helps other people grow and scale their businesses. Greg, will you please tell us who you are and what you do to help other businesses? Sure. My name is Greg Baker. I'm managing partner of two of the funds within Alumni Ventures, a venture capital fund that is very specifically a follow-on investor. We're not the, a lead investor for people, but we bring money to the table. Uh, we help companies awesome. grow and you know, we uh, build nice portfolios and uh, then do what we can do, do to help them uh, meet their expectations. All right, Greg. So let's pretend I don't know anything about raising money. What does a follow-on investor, what does that mean? What, why, what is the difference between a lead investor and what you do to help these businesses? Well, a lead investor is generally going to negotiate the terms of the deal, uh, okay. price, price the round. And oftentimes, you know, majority of the times they're going to take a board seat. They're going to, they're going to be one of your board of directors, right? We are going to invest under the same terms as that lead investor. Um, in our case, we only take about 10% or less of the round. We're not right. going gonna to take a board seat. We're going to be kind of a trusted advisor. Gotcha. Uh, the way we raise money from individuals. So we have a huge network of people who are, have either invested or are considering investing, um, where a lot of lead investors get a handful of very large Verified. institutionals. Um, right. So you know, they're, they're getting checks of $10, $50 million to build their <laughs> billion dollar fund. We're right. taking of 25,000 to a million from individuals. But doing that, we've had 600,000 plus people actively sign up to be a part of our network. And wow. they're very willing to help our portfolio companies in their, you know, through their you know, path to success. That is so cool. That is so cool. You know, a, a lot of people don't know that there are multiple uh, investors in a round. And, and as people kind of approach this topic of raising money, it, it's very nerve wracking because they feel like, okay, there's, there's one person investing in me. But the reality is, is that most of the time, a lead investor does all the homework, they do all the research, and then they do have partners like you who are helping them with the raise. Yeah, the the more people that you have investing in your company, you know, have a vested interest in helping you succeed, the, the better off you are. You know, everyone brings their own network and their community. Right. And and that's a lot of the reason that many VCs don't take an entire round. Now there are times where they do take the whole round. Sure. Um, but it's relatively rare. Interesting. Interesting. So, so how many participants are there generally uh, on average? Uh, it, it all depends on the size and the stage. Uh, generally speaking, I, I think that three to seven is kind of a typical um, round size. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. So as, as, you, as you attach to this other trusted company, obviously, obviously the lead investor has got to be someone that you trust, Right. To have done um, the right research. <laughs> we, we, well, we we trust but verify is the way right. we look. At it. Um, a lot of times, you know, we're we're promising our investors that we're going to give them a diverse portfolio, and none of the investors are my mother. Um, she's the only one who thinks I could understand a very diverse <laughs> set of industries, and she's wrong. Um, so you know what I am. I'm invested in biotech companies. I'm invested in a company that's building the next space station. I'm invested wow. in SaaS companies. It's all over the map. My day is fascinating. I'm talking to pe people that are passionate about doing things that are changing the world. And wow. I, I look for a lead investor that has experience in that industry at that stage 
know, the, right. the actual partner that's taking the board seat, not, it, it doesn't necessarily, it's not always Excel and Andreessen and Bessemer sure. and Sequoia that you want to invest in. Certain sure. industries you want to be with, with someone who's done it before. And, right. and then you, you look at the research they've done on this company and that industry. And then we use our network to, you know, is this making sense? You know, right. Also, in, in our organization, we have subject matter experts that we lean on. Sure. And uh, so when I do a biotech deal, I've got a few people I can talk to. When I'm doing a space deal, I have a few people I can talk to and, right. and things like that. Doing a space deal. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. It really is kind of fun to think about, isn't it? it well, I did have the honor last year. It, the company's Axiom Space. They, they're they building the next space station. They've started sending um, private astronauts to the space station. And last year, they sent four individuals up. Holy it cow. About a year ago today. Uh, it, was, wow. it was April of uh, 2022 and I was invited to the launch and I was standing near people who'd been to the moon, which was That's really crazy. It was taking off and they're scheduled to launch their second mission in two weeks. And um, Love it. I've been invited to go again. So that's a lot of fun. Fascinating. Fascinating. All right. Now we know a bit about your business and, and in your business, you are a business Right. I mean, the, people think of venture capital firms as as just one offs who want to just throw some money at people and, and harass them all the time. But that's not really what it's like. Tell us what it is like in your business and tell us a little bit about your growth journey, because obviously it's not just you. You have a lot of people on your team raising their own funds. How does it structure? How does that work within your company? So Alumni Ventures, the parent organization, was started in 2014. A guy had the idea to raise that individuals didn't have access to venture capital as an asset class. Right. And, right. And, and let's be honest, our customers are the investors, not the companies we invest in, which is sure. something that a lot of founders don't truly recognize. When push comes to shove, we need to do what's right for the people who asked us to invest, intelligently invest their money. 100%. So. He created this via, you know, this way of letting individuals invest. And I was employee 12, something like that. I joined in 2017. At the time, we we had uh, five different funds within the organization. Um, We're actually structured around the alumni of certain universities. So my first fund were... I was raising money from the alumni of the University of Wisconsin, which is where I went undergrad and got my mechanical engineering degree. Cool. And back then, we would mostly invest just in companies that were founded by people from the same school. A lot of cheese stuff. Well, uh, actually, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, well, well, it was a fake cheese company did approach <laughs> one of our other funds, and they they asked me if I wanted to invest. I said, "No, I can't. I can't invest in fake cheese." <laughs> the last thing we can do. Um, That's awesome. Well, what we we felt that was the best way we could, you know, we could pull that alumni string to get into the best possible deals for our investors. Right. As we, but we've grown. We're now 150 people across alumni ventures, and we've had over a billion dollars invested in us. And wow. it's been a very wow. short period of time. And we've become the, we're the most active venture capital fund in the country right now. Wow. So we're we're doing about a, a we're wiring money to a company every day across wow. the organization, and I've now added the Tower View Ventures, which is our um, Duke University fund. But we have funds for multiple schools. You don't have to have gone to one of our schools to invest. Uh, uh-huh. We and we have ones if if none of this if you are annoyed by all of our schools, we have. Uh, places for people to invest where they're not specifically um, <laughs> in the school. And we also have um, a very specific, we have it, we just closed an artificial intelligence fund. And wow. there's no one running that per se. Um, right. if there's just this chunk of money. When I make an investment in an artificial intelligence company, that fund puts money in and we build a portfolio specifically around one industry 
for people with that in, using the 20 different funds within alumni ventures that are actively searching for deals. That's awesome. That, that really is fascinating. I mean, honestly, um, I would say the vast majority of business founders out there have no idea the structure of a VC firm and how they are put together and the types of, of raising that they do and the types of deals they look for. I mean, this is all pretty fascinating. Yeah, well, we're, un- we're a little unique because of having that uh, block of individual investors. So we're structured a little differently than you know, the brand names that you hear, but right, right. It, it's, it's a business. And our CEO often says that we're, we're a startup ourselves. I think we're like a series <laughs> C at this point, but um, you know, we're, we're in those awkward teen years. Well, I mean, when you've been entrusted with over a billion dollars, that's, that's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty it, respectable teenager. Yes. Yes. It, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's very, um, I'm honored that uh, people have entrusted us to put their money to work. And our results are such that uh, I think they've made the right decision. So um, we're certainly headed in the right direction for helping them out. And uh, we're having companies, uh, helping companies grow and uh, do what they set out. I love it. Just a few seconds to let you know about a project that we've been putting together for the last several months. And we're finally launching it called the Captain's Council. You see, as a CEO or operator of a business, it can feel like you get stuck in your own head a lot of the time. You get challenges that you don't know how to resolve. You get people causing problems in your leadership team that you don't know how to resolve. And it's so hard to overcome those things by yourself. You don't have to anymore. Join the Captain's Council. Captain's Council is a group of other CEOs and operators and owners of businesses where we come together once a month for several hours to discuss the biggest challenges you're facing. You express to the council of eight to 10 people about what's going on. Where do you feel stuck? And these other people are in the same boat as you. They're running and operating their own businesses. They're your peers. They help you kind of dissect what's happening and help you see things that you may not have seen all by yourself. If you don't have a good, strong network of people around you, come join the Captain's Council. This is gonna be something that will change the way you run your business and open your eyes to opportunities that you have never seen without the help of your peer group. Come check it out, captainscouncil.com. I love it. Now, now that's the whole focus of the podcast, right? The, the people listening are people in that effort to try and grow and scale their businesses right now. And as we, as you approach these deals, and as you're talking with these founders or, or getting to at least read the bios and understand what's happening with, with financials and all that other stuff, what would you say are the, are the most positive signs that you're like, okay, this is definitely one we want to throw some money at. What, what are the commonalities between these, these companies? Well, we, we look at companies on, you know, a number of different levels, but we really kind of focus on four main categories and it, the biggest driver in all of them are who have you been able to bring to work with you, whether that be you know, we're not, well, there's, there's got to be a lead investor in place before I actually write a check. So what right. lead investor did you get? Who are your advisors? Um, what, why are you doing that? Why, why you, why now is yeah. a, a very common question I ask because sometimes markets aren't ready for innovation, um, right. depending on the market. Agreed. Uh, sometimes you're not the right person. You know, did you just come up with something? You, you're, You've been a an accountant, and all of a sudden you're doing a biotech startup. I, no, right, <laughs> um, right, right. Usually you don't get something that bizarre, but then really when you start to talk to them, I like to see that they listen and that they react. Right. Um, my colleague uh, says that our job is we're selling money, which is bizarre, but it actually is true. It's true. And so we have to sell our product, but the CEO, when they're talking to me, they have to be able to sell their company to me. Yeah. 
And we're, we, we rarely visit with the company. We, we have calls like this and we, we find out what they're doing, but I, outside of biotech, I can't think of a lot of companies that have become household names, the super, you know, this is why you invest in this company that are actually doing what they started to do. Right. Right. I recognize Amazon sells books, but that's not why. That's um, not who they are today. Exactly. (laughs) That's not why they're they're worth what they're worth. Um, Right. So you can create a wonderful product or a wonderful service and take it to market. And the customers are going to tell you what they really, you know, what they really want it to be. Sure. And the, job of the CEO and his team or her team are to listen to that and mo- and deliver to the customer what they're going to pay for. Right. And if I throw out a kind of a strange, you know, why aren't you doing this? And I immediately yeah. get the, oh, because that's stupid <laughs> type reaction. For you sure. Can tell that they're the type of person we developed the best mousetrap. Everyone's going to buy it. I do not want to invest in that company. I want to invest in a company that is going to solve the problems people want to pay for. Yep. 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 And, and what, how do you recognize that? Because, you know, looking on paper, there's a lot of companies that can show that they've shown some growth, but how, what, what are the, what are the, the green flags that pop up? Not the red flags, but the things that you're like, okay, I, I really trust what they're trying to deliver here. I hate, I hate it. It's kind of contrite, but you know, when you see it, it's, yeah. it's really, yeah. um, and I, I understand it, that it, it's, it's sad. I know going into a phone call that nine times out of 10, I'm going to say no. Is that right? It's just the nature of, of this business that I'm going to see at least not nine companies and half of those are great. They're just not yeah. right. For, they're not right for what we're doing. And right. I think they'll be very, they have the potential to be very successful, but yeah. it, it's not personal. It's just, right. this is what we're looking, you know, this is the kind of thing we're looking for. And, you know, I, I like to see, you know, a, someone who's a very obvious learner. Gotcha. You know, that, that they're, they're not solving solving the world's problem because they're the smartest person in the room. They're right. They're solving. They're they're creating a business, and Love it. it's it's subtle and it's it's a bit of an art. But we we also then throw a lot of quantitative stuff on it to kind of balance out not just ooh this sure. was a really the emotional meeting. side. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is hard to be emotional and logical at the same time when making these kind of decisions, but you have shareholders at stake, right? I mean, it, it, I think the thing that I'd like to get across to a lot of these people listening today is that you're not being extra picky. You're not knocking out nine out of 10 companies because you don't think they have a chance. You're knocking out nine out of 10 companies because there are a select few that represent the values, the, the things that your, your investors stand for, right? I mean, how do you, how do you align those two things? And is that typically the, the biggest driving factor in deciding who you want to fund? Um, well, taking a step back from that, yeah. um, I have a lot of people that call me before they're, you know, they're just at starting off the journey because we have this alumni and, you know, early, early companies will reach out to me. And I had a guy yesterday, he has a fascinating product. I think that he could, he could be a multi-billion dollar company. Nice. And he's looking to raise $400,000. Yeah. And I said, okay, when you get off this call, don't ever, don't talk to another venture capitalist for at least a year. You go find $400,000. It's a little bit of work, but it's not that hard. You control your business. Right. Um, most most companies should not talk to venture capital. It's it's kind of a oh I have, I have this company I have a few customers oh time to talk to venture capital. Right. No, it's figure out what you want out of your business and fund it to meet your your and your team's goals. 
Right. And sometimes that is venture capital. Sometimes we are, we have, we bring a lot of nice things to the table. Um, it's not significantly faster. We might re- write bigger checks, but sure, we're going through sure. a, a big process. And, you know, that process takes some time, uh, especially with right. the lead investor. We can move relatively quickly um, because, you know, we're kind of just verifying a lot of data and, right getting to know the company a little bit. So I so, so what what in your opinion is the driver between going to VC versus PE versus debt? Well, there are a number of other there's there's bootstrapping, there's angels, sure. there's I, I I raised about 15 million dollars for a company. Um, I started 4 days before September 11th, 2001 to oh, raise boy. money for the first time. And I was able to raise almost $2 million in six months just from individuals. And it saved my company because I watched other competitors raise money from venture capital. They threw my, much nicer parties for three years and then they went away. It took, yes. it took about nine years for us to break down the slow adoption of a certain marketplace. So wow. you need to know what it's, you, you need to analyze your business Right. And find the right money. There's a lot of money that's not tied to venture capital that wants sure. to invest in early stage companies. Sure. You just have to find someone who believes in the same mission that you that you're going after. And and you can stay out of it and you can have slightly more patient money. I mean, they still want to yeah. you know, those investors still want to make money, but they're not tied to the venture capital. In 10 years, you have to go public get acquired or go, totally. or go away. Um, totally. Totally. And if, if you want to be a business that um, is, you know, generational that, that you want, you know, you know, you're in an area and there's unemployment, sure. you know, people are, you know, the, the G the GM company went away and you want to create something that employs a hundred people forever. Um, don't go to venture capital because we're going to have you be acquired or go public. It's um, love you, it. You build it that way. So it's that, that's a good definition because I think a lot of people do get confused. Who do I go to? I, I just want to raise some money to get this thing going, right? I, I need I need some I need some money to tie me over to the next uh, you know season or whatever. And, and, and so and, I think that confuses people. Yeah, and you want to focus on developing your product and building customers, but you do have to go raise money and it's hard. Yeah. And, yeah. and not going to VC might make it a little harder, but it, it's still doable. And it, awesome. do what's right for you and your team. I love it. Good good definition. This has been a great conversation, honestly. I, I think that too often these topics go without being talked about because people don't know, they don't really understand the different types of money they can raise for their business. So I appreciate all the time you spent with us today. Before I let you go, though, I really want to know, you know, everyone's got someone who inspires them to do what they're doing and maybe mentors them in a way that has brought them to this next level, to where you're at today. Do you have someone you'd like to give a shout out to today? Um, well, if my dad was still alive, um, yes. a lot, he he actually you know instilled a lot of things in me that you everything you need you learned in kindergarten right um he he instilled a lot, a lot of things in me that uh, i i lean on every day but um you know i came into this this business i had done a little bit of corporate venture capital i'd re- done my own company but i didn't have a lot of vc experience right. and uh, the CEO of our organization, Mike Collins, and the chief investment officer of our you know, TK Kugler, at, at that time, you know, TK kind of looked at me like, "You don't have the experience to do this." But Mike also pointed out, "Hey, it's a networking business because, like right. I said, we're selling money." Um, and they they took the shot on uh, with me, and it's turned out. And you know, TK gave me a lot of advice on lo- how to look at companies and and love it simple mistakes I might miss out on. And, and Mike creates a nice um, structure for us to work in and succeed. So fantastic. I love those shout outs. And it's good. It's good to shout out people that you work with because there really are a lot. There's a lot of value to be driven there. And when you got the right team, 
And yeah. uh, I totally appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank oh. you for your time today. Um, is there a place where you're active if people want to catch up with you or, or connect with you? Are you active on social somewhere? Um, LinkedIn mostly. Um, I, awesome. I, I've, I'm getting too old to uh, be on too much social. Um, That's okay. <laughs> and, and I'm, you know, I, I want to thank you, Todd, for everything you're doing because this is kind of a, a the middle, the very important part of building a successful business. Um, I, you know, it's it's not easy to create a business, but it's right. easier than growing a substantial company. Agreed. And all the advice you can help people with is great. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your support for me and for the show. And for those listening, follow up with him. We're going to put all his connection info in the show notes below. So take a look. And uh, we appreciate you being here today so much. And we'll see you on the next episode. Hey, what did you think of that conversation? I loved it. I, I, I really did. I learned so much. And the more uh, VC firms and, and people who run these funds that I talk to, the more I begin to understand that they really are just trying to make the best decisions they can and investing in the in the companies that they feel like will benefit their group of investors the best. And so don't always take it so personal. This is a very transactional equation for them. They're following the lead of some other lead investor or if they are the lead investor, they're gonna drill you with questions because a lot of people are on the line when they throw money at a company or an opportunity. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation and please know that all of our interviews have immense value in for you as a founding group, as a leader in an organization who's trying to grow and scale. And we hope that you listen to other episodes. These are valuable conversations and I hope that you share these with other people. Like, share, subscribe, do whatever you need to do to help support us in our journey to support you in your growth and scaling journey. We're so glad to be here with you. Thanks for enjoying the Growth and Scaling Podcast. We'll see you on the next one.